All right, greetings, class, and welcome to week number 13. That is right, week number 13 of your 7314 class, which is your reference class. As always, I am Dr. J.S.K. Austin, and we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I know you all are excited. Yes, that's right. We have a 15-week course, and you are in week number 13. So you have week 13, week 14, week 15, and then you are done. So how does that feel? How does that feel? It's got to feel pretty, pretty pretty good but we do still have a little bit more work to do and we are going to do it now first of all when i say a little bit more work i really do mean a little bit more work of course you all have readings to do and if you want to watch your check-in videos you may um but uh you all only have three graded assignments left one of those being a discussion board post that you'll do in may and then also you uh you have your lib guides to turn in which i'm thinking and assuming that you have already been working on and you have your uh semester long projects which you certainly should have been working on uh by now um and i think most of you are if you have not been working on that then uh you probably want to start soon and it will be kind of a stressful crunch for you uh but it's not impossible to get it done between now and the due date which i believe is actually let's look at the due date it's made the something is it may the 9th um it is yes may the 9th so you have a little bit under a month left again uh that's going to be pretty stressful to get that done if you haven't started it yet but it won't be impossible go ahead and start working on that semester long project if you haven't already and you will uh very very soon uh hopefully have it done and then you can uh put your feet up for a little bit during the summer and relax hopefully hopefully i can't say that everyone's gonna have the opportunity to do that but i'm hoping most of you will have the opportunity to do that so um having said that so um actually yeah, so having said that, the main thing that i want us to do is uh finish out strong and what we are going to uh talk about today is we are uh as far as our resources that, oh before we even get into resources uh because we're still in state of the course updates right now so the next state of the course update and this will probably be the last state of the course update for this week but uh the next state of the course update is that i do just want to thank you all for um the uh just the level of engagement that we had when um uh, when dustin koopman uh spoke this past, uh last week was very very good um i was very impressed by the amount of questions you all were answering how attentive you all were and then a lot of you stayed over um which is also rare and i'm not talking about stayed over for like five minutes y'all stayed over for like 30 minutes um talking to uh dustin beyond the uh beyond the uh close time of 8 30 p.m central uh so yes it was very good i want there to be a lot of if you take my classes in the future and i have guest speakers please be engaged with the guest speakers it's a very big deal to me because uh, these guest speakers they take time to prepare these presentations and so i do want them to have an audience that is receptive to what they're saying and hearing what they are saying okay so very good job on that and then what we're going to talk about uh, for the rest of the class which will probably be uh, I should be able to keep this one at 20 minutes or less. And of course, you uh, can speed me up and I hope you have. Um, but we're what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about two databases that can be used a lot when you are dealing specifically with freshmen and sophomores in college who are doing persuasive papers or persuasive speeches. And then also this database does work very well for K-12 when you're doing a persuasive speeches and that sort of thing or per persuasive essays um so these two resources are going to be the cq researcher and opposing viewpoints and context opposing viewpoints uh and context is actually the better one uh for persuasive speeches and persuasive essays so we're going to start on that one first and then we're going to look at the cq researcher and then we've already talked about academic search premiere slash academic search complete um so we don't really need to go over that and then you all are probably already aware of like google news and google scholar and all of that uh, and we did talk about google scholar in the interlibrary loan uh video so i'm not going to take time for this video for those resources okay but let's let's definitely get into um our opposing viewpoints and context so that you can see how this uh database works and why it's excuse me a good database for 
uh, persuasive essays and persuasive speeches, which again, you often have for middle school students, high school students, and then uh, college students in the first two years. So let's go to, okay, let's make me small. All right, so opposing viewpoints in context. What this does is it gives you, um, you can always do the regular search and we'll come back and do the regular search. But what I would say is that the benefit for opposing viewpoints in context is that you will have, um, if you want to browse issues, there are a bunch of hot button issues that you can browse. And then if you browse those issues, what you can do is you can go to a particular issue. So let's say that you have an issue of, um, and there are a lot, and there are new ones added a lot. So you'll see updated, like Road Rage updated. Uh, you'll see new for some of these, probably I don't see one yet, but there we go. Uh, so new, um, and then the others, they're still always adding sources, even to the ones that don't say updated. So um, what you can do with this, and you have all of your hot button issues, of course, you have like capital punishment and abortion and those sorts of things, but you have a lot of other uh, hot button issues uh, as well. Palestine, uh, patriotism, peer pressure, police brutality. You have a lot of these great issues that are issues that students a lot of times have to do. Uh, persuasive essays on. And so what you can do is you can pick one of these and I'm not going to do abortion or the death penalty because those get done to death anyway. Let me see one that will be a little better. Give me a moment. Okay, let's actually do freedom of speech because freedom of speech actually becomes a really big deal with intellectual freedom uh, in the library science profession anyway. So let's go ahead and do this one. So it's probably not going to be very likely that you have a middle or high school student or a college freshman or sophomore who wants to be a librarian. But uh, if you did and they wanted to and they were taking some sort of library science class and uh, they wanted to talk about freedom of speech, um, what you can do is for browse issues you can select an issue and if we select freedom of speech we're taken first to this landing page here and this landing page for one thing gives us a nice little overview essay you can read that overview essay and get some very compact and necessary information there and by the way you can also get sample uh, citations and things um, so you get this and the landing page is very good because it sets up a context for you and it can still a lot of times be used as a source. But then what happens is you get a bunch of featured sources. And this is very good because it really just allows these students to go ahead and jump right in to a particular subject matter and just grab sources without having to go to all these different databases or finding results that are not relevant to what they're discussing, which again, in this case, is freedom of speech. Um, because, you know, when you when you Google and when you use Academic Search Complete and things like that, you still have these uh, results that are not really on topic. They're not really results that are relevant to um, like you can put in freedom of speech and you can still uh, in Academic Search Complete and you can get some things that are really not focused on freedom of speech. But what you will get in um, opposing viewpoints in context here. Those things are going to be really focused. If you select browse issues, at least those things are going to be really focused on the uh, issue that you're browsing. And on the page, you are going to have, um, you'll see, once you get past the uh, the overview essay, you'll see various source types and different classifications. So, um, yeah, you'll have reference materials, uh, 524, you'll have uh, numbers next to the type of material. Uh, we've got two primary sources. We have about 1,800 magazine articles. We have um, academic journals, nearly 200 things. Uh, websites, 14 things. We'll probably have a lot of news, yeah, a lot of news. Uh, but we've even got biographies. We've got things that are specifically written as viewpoint essays. And things that are written as viewpoint essays, by the way, are very good because um, those things, what you can do is, uh, you wouldn't do this at the grad school level probably ever, but when you are college sophomore or below, what you can do is, yeah, you can actually do a persuasive speech and you can just pull other people's arguments, cite them, of course, don't plagiarize, but you can pull other people's, um, <laughs> other people's arguments into your own arguments. And you can even, those arguments that you would oppose, you could see uh, what those arguments are, and then you can try to actually, or 
um, arguments that would oppose your stance, you could see what some of those arguments are, and then you can be ready for counters. Um, and what you can, beyond having these categories, if you continue to scroll down, then you will get the full text. And by the way, uh, pretty much everything that you will access in opposing viewpoints in context is um, full text right there in the database. So that's another benefit of it is that you don't have to use interlibrary loan or go to other databases. You can find it all here. So this is a very easy database to teach students. And so this is, again, something that middle and high school students even uh, can be shown without any incident and without any problem. So you can scroll down and then you can pick some of these things. So let's say, for instance, that I did want some viewpoint essays. And these can be from pretty much anywhere. Um, but what I can do is, okay, I've got 420. Uh, don't get high. I've got a 420. Come on, give it to me. There we go. Sorry, y'all had to wait through that. But um, so I, again, I have 420 viewpoint essays here. Now these things, uh, one thing that I do want to warn you about is these things can be really, really old. So uh, they will sort by relevance, and that's great. But sometimes if you're just seeing, and thankfully we do have things 2021, we do have a lot of things 2022, we've got really new stuff popping up here. But that's not always going to be the case. So if you're, if you come into this and you're seeing a bunch of stuff from 2005 and all that stuff, then what you can do is you can go to sort by newest and then it'll bring your newest stuff to the top. And then you can use your, uh, your filter tools over here as well. But you can see your, uh, your various, um, viewpoints and everything. And so cancel culture is antithetical to human freedom. We can go ahead and click that. And by the way, another thing that makes this useful for your um, your people at the uh, student level in high school and middle school is that you do have word counts right there. So you can always know um, you do have Lexile's uh, Lexile information, I believe, as well. But um, you definitely want to have your word count just right there and then you can just jump in and. Uh, if you know that something is going to be too long for somebody based on their age or something like that, you can take that into account. But of course, uh, 1,057 words is not going to be too long really for anyone. You can go ahead, click in there, and there's your full text. And then you even have, again, your sample citation and everything. Um, and so again, this is a great way to, okay, we are going to go over 15 minutes, but we're not going to go dreadfully over it. Um, but this is a great way to build arguments, to pull arguments, to back things up with facts. And you can even have like statistics for some of these as well. The statistics uh, offerings in this database, I would say, are disappointing, but can still be useful. Um, in academic journals, again, they can be, uh, uh, you get a little note here if it's peer reviewed. So that's very important. And you can see, so like, yeah, if you've got something that's 10,000 words, uh, which will be the case with a lot of academic journal stuff, you're not going to necessarily want to give that to a middle schooler. Uh, 42,000 words, definitely not going to want to give that to a middle schooler. Uh, Yale Law Journal, of course, you're not going to want to give that to a middle schooler, but I'm just saying. So um, that can be helpful. And then uh, just to show you, and then we'll go on to the next database, and if you want to play around with this, I don't believe that Mizzou has access to this. You're going to need to uh, go through probably your local public library, but this is a good database to kind of practice around in and get some experience with. Um, but if you are, um, so we saw that thing for cancel culture, um, and there's a debate as to whether or not cancel culture is even a thing. Oh, but they do actually have a page for it, okay, that I was not expecting. Um, but cancel culture is also called purity culture by some people. And so you can, if you want to, just go ahead and do a search, a regular search, freeform search, and then see what comes up. And as you can see, for purity culture, we do have four things that come up in magazines and five things that come up in news, one thing that comes up in viewpoints. So it's not occurring a lot, but it can still be useful. Okay. All right. So if you want to play around with opposing viewpoints, it's a good one to have in your toolbox. We will keep this under 20 minutes. I do promise that. Okay. Let's go ahead and go into the CQ Researcher. Hold on. Okay, so CQ Researcher is another one that is, you know, kind of issues based and you can browse issues. Uh, it's not quite as easy to use as um, as 
opposing viewpoints and context, but one of the good things about CQ Researcher is that it will allow you to pull up essays that will uh, cite a variety of sources that you can use to build up a source list really quick. And so that's also something that can be very useful for middle school students, high school students, and um, students who are undergrads, even if they're beyond the freshman and sophomore level, especially if they are people who are in the social sciences, they can still, um, as majors, they can still get a lot of knowledge out of the CQ researcher. Uh, so what we can do, and we'll go again, I guess, to freedom of speech. And so I know that that's in both media and in law and justice, but you can browse topics. You can also browse by report and some other things. Um, and if you, this is also something that I don't believe Mizzou has, but your local public library may have. Um, and so you can also go to the about page if you want to get some information there. Um, but okay, let's go. Uh, so you have topics and you also have reports. We're in the law and justice uh, topic. Let's go to freedom of press and speech, just so you can see what's here. And then, um, so you have these various essays that are here, and some of these essays can be really old, like here's a, uh, or some of these categories, I should say, these reports can be really old. So you've even got one from like 91, 93, oh Lord, we're going to the 80s. Oh, this is in chronological order. Okay, so as you can see, it's been a little while since I've actually been really in this, um, in this particular uh, database, but uh, that, that's what the benefits for this database are. So the Biden presidency, we can probably click on that. And we've got a full report here. So we start out with the full report. And when I say it goes in depth, I really do mean it goes in depth. So these are the various components of this Biden uh, presidency report. And as you can see, it will be a lot of scrolling, a lot of scrolling, uh, because this is all the stuff that's in there. Um, but what happens is, and this is what makes CQ Researcher so neat, is that you do have these uh, footnotes, and the footnotes will link you right to what's being cited. And it's so user-friendly. And so this is a great way to very, very quickly, very, 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 very quickly build a, um, build a thick uh, sources list or references list or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so you can also go to these various uh, bullets to the side here. And for a lot of the issues, you will have your pro and con stuff. You'll have um, different uh, issue tracker things and that sort of thing. So you can actually get some historical context with this as well. So the CQ researcher is also very useful for students who are trying to do persuasive essays or persuasive speeches. And so you're going to want to have this in your toolbox as well. And uh, I don't know if it makes a lot of use of academic journals, uh, peer reviewed journals. And that can also be a good thing, because if it doesn't make a lot of use of that, which, again, I don't think it does, then that means that uh, the sources that are going to be footnoted a lot of times are still sources that middle and high school students will uh, be able to read and understand. So the last thing that I'm going to show you, that's all I'm going to show you for uh, CQ Researcher right now. But again, I would advise you all to, uh, if you can, I would advise you all to uh, just explore it, see what it does, maybe re uh, watch a tutorial of it if you can. Um, but the last thing I'm going to show you is I will be linking this LibGuide. So there's this LibGuide here for opinions and opposing views, websites, as well as databases. And so as you can see, opposing viewpoints and context is the uh, big one that they show here. But if you're looking for uh, just other like free over the web stuff that can help you with uh, opinions and opposing views, ProCon.org is something you can look at. And there are several other uh, just over the uh, over the internet websites. Um, you can also do some fact checking and things like that. And that's also very useful when you're doing persuasive essays and um, other essays for rumors, hoaxes and fact checking you will find over here. So this is this is uh, in keeping with the theme of what I've talked about. And so I am going to link this libgate for you all so that you can take note of these resources as well. So with that said, again, I'm going to leave this at under 20 minutes. I am Dr. Jace and peace and grace. We will see you next week.